Welcome to another program in our series on free, uh, on the DFL Senior uh, Roundtable. Uh, we are talking today uh, again, I'm glad to say, with uh, Jim Reed, the secretary of the DFL Senior Caucus. Jim, uh, uh, what did you want to pick up on? Uh, uh, we were beginning to talk about safe and livable communities uh, on our other program. Right, and um, this being a continuation of the previous program, uh, let me say that we're now talking about some of the subject areas that the Senior Caucus has been addressing with our legislators as well as with individuals and community leaders uh, across the state. Now again, across the state really is best done by chapters. And that is why Bill is forming a chapter here, and we have done chapters in other parts of the state, particularly in rural communities like Mora, where we have a chapter. And as I said, uh, we have one in Moorhead, we have one in Brainerd, we have Rochester, and so on, chapters that are making progress in their local communities because, by and large, some of these prob problems are more local than statewide. We know that living in a safe environment is very important to seniors, and we know that our opposition at times has made the question of security and social responsibility a topic by which they try to divide seniors uh, from the rest of the community, particularly those communities that may represent a new ethnic minority in a community, as we have in St. Cloud, where there is a significant number of Somali residents who have come in the last 15 years and who live peacefully, but they certainly have different cultural interests and different, well, cultural and religious occasions that they follow. We know that senior abuse was a big problem and remains to some degree a problem that seniors have been financially as well as physically abused by not only unfortunately members of their families but staff at nursing homes, staff at assisted living facilities and sometimes simply staff operating services within their neighborhood. Sometimes they have been financially ripped off, <laughs> they are unfortunately more vulnerable to internet security questions and the kind of individuals who will call you up and tell you that the IRS is looking to get you because, well frankly, there's something wrong with your tax return from five years ago. Right. These things happen. We have worked with the state legislature to see that the legislature understands that senior abuse is a significant problem within society and that seniors need the kind of services and the legislation punishing those who are involved in providing and abusing seniors so that we, the seniors can feel more safe in their homes. On top of that, and equally important, is to see that those who take care of seniors be it nursing homes or assisted living facilities or even hospitals and perhaps hospices are adequately paid so that those who take those responsibilities are there for a period of time, enjoy their work, find benefit from the effort and feel that they're paid sufficiently to continue their lives as they see fit. The 5% increase that we helped the legislators pass is one of those steps. Nothing could be more important for security for seniors than to know that the staff that is helping them, providing the services that they come to their home, and providing the services they need when they can no longer stay at home, are amply compensated and truly want to be there. That has been a problem in the past that the staff and we've seen staff abuse of seniors is because only the most desperate in society have been willing to take those jobs. That had to end. 
there was another 5% raise that didn't get through this year that hopefully will happen in 2017. Because again, nothing can help seniors more than to know that those who are in fact there to help them are there because they want to be, not because they are so desperate that they'll take the lowest paying jobs. And, and that will depend upon our electing enough uh, Absolutely. D DFLers on November 8th. We can't expect the opposing party who believes that government should only cut, 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 that there are no <laughs> expenses that are justified. And in fact, all questions should be left up to the private institutions who may feel quite happy to pay at the lowest possible rates and possibly use the most desperate members of society to fill these roles, that they feel that that's an okay solution. But we know how that has worked in such institutions as the prisons because, frankly, where the state has tried to have private prisons, those prisons have become nothing but centers of abuse and chaotic violence. Now, we can't do that. We have to make sure that we amply compensate and the state provides the resources that these individuals are amply compensated and the regulation and oversight to see that those nonprofit institutions where they do fit in are doing the right thing. There we go again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I see that uh, the Senior Caucus has considered some other topics uh, for uh, resolutions. How do, how, do, how do the Senior Caucus member uh, get their concern considered? Well, as I said, one of the things we have done is survey. <coughs> uh, we have quite literally surveyed at the, at the uh, Minnesota State Fair. We survey, of course, at DFL events. We try to survey through communities, again, asking our chapters in part to take that responsibility when, where they, when they can. We just talk to the public as another form of gaining back interest and, and really gaining the knowledge as to what is the questions that their communities address or need to address. So uh, more than anything is getting members and membership who can come back and tell us, well, you know, here in Granite Falls, this is really what we have mm -hmm. and what we've got to do. That's how, we get, that's how we make progress, and that's why we need chapters, and we want chapters across the state so each one can collect, accumulate, and then share with other chapters what their interests are, what their issues are, and what solutions are available. I, I see uh, the DFL uh, uh, website has a large um, section on for seniors, dfl.org slash seniors. And the, uh, there were five other resolutions that were suggested, for example. Let's uh, talk about that a little bit. One of the issues that we've run into is that we would like to use electronic media I guess because, well, frankly, it does allow you to contact more <laughs> individuals and get a message across more easily and more in a more cost-efficient manner than printed paper. And even though we use printed paper, like this advertisement for our picnic, which will be this Sunday, and by the way, if you live in the metro area or you can get to the metro area, I certainly recommend you come to our picnic. It will be in Brookview Park this Sunday from noon until 3. Brookview Park is in Golden Valley. Well, uh, in any case, doing things with paper, uh, well, is slow. Mailing them is expensive. And all the efforts are time consuming. 
And so we like using electronic media. The problem we have seen in the state of Minnesota is the state isn't very well wired up. <laughs> we need broadband. We need broadband across the state. <laughs> and we have been working with the state legislature to see that that issue can be addressed. Unfortunately, our political opposition believes that, oh, we can just leave that up to the cable companies, the media companies, and the like. Well, the situation today isn't much different than the situation uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt faced in the 1930s about ele electrification of rural communities, which is the electric companies were unwilling to put out that expense because connecting the last mile, if you're in the telecommunications or electrical business, that's always a question. Connecting the last mile was simply too expensive from their mind relative to the revenue they were to receive in a short period of time. As we know in this country now, decisions tend to be made by businesses over no more than a three-year horizon. And if you're putting out millions of dollars to wire a community, you may not get back that investment in three years. So we've wanted the state to provide subsidies so that those things can happen, either to directly to communities so they can wire themselves up, or if necessary, to our private institutions so that they can wire the communities as part of their service distribution. But uh, again, the other political party doesn't think that public involvement is necessary and public solutions are worthwhile. So until we have a solid DFL legislature, we will struggle to get such things as broadband funding passed. But yet all we have are pilot projects. They're good, but they're only covering about a tenth of the problem. So uh, that, that's an important resolution that might pass uh, in the coming year. Uh, well, it all depends on who's there. <laughs> and we know that particularly those who believe themselves to be Tea Party members of the opposing party just don't think government should be involved in anything. Yes, that, I, I, I sense that their leadership at least are anti-government. Uh, well, we know that the leadership on the national scale, and particularly the pundits and columnists that drive their image, their actions, really drive the kind of viewpoint that they carry. Since Ronald Reagan view government as a problem, not the solution, and that small government, in fact, government small enough to be drowned in a bathtub is what we need. That means government everywhere. Oddly enough, they like to promote when they can, if they have to promote government, local government, saying that all issues should be done locally. Well, we're happy with local government as well as they are. And again, our chapters are here to see that we can see local governments do what they ought to do. But we do know that when local government says, happened in, in North Carolina, passed resolutions such as allowing transgender individuals to use the bathrooms, that the Republicans, our opposition, will reach down from the state level and say no. When the state of Vermont came out and said that genetically modified foods ought to be so labeled, Republicans at the national government level said, no, we can't have a state make such a decision, and they passed their own legislation, nullifying the, the Vermont legislation. So local government apparently only matters when it votes their way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, part of the problem in, in uh, today is that that U.S. Supreme Court decision on Citizens United has opened up the floodgates of money from the very rich uh, individuals and corporations that are uh, bombarding people with uh, uh, many false messages. 
well, we do know that that money now has reaching down all the way down to local elections and has tended to, unfortunately, really hide the issues that occur not only nationally but statewide and local and provide an image of America which, well, is frightening. And it turns off state. people uh, toward government generally. Yes, it drives people away from the polls. And we remember we were talking previously about voter ID. Well, that may only be the first step. Uh, driving people out of the democratic process may be the real step. That if they can, by either political action like voter ID or simply by their words and statements, keep people away from the polls, keep people disinterested in government, keep people, literally, seniors and younger generations viewing government as an abuse, not a savior, then they've won. And we'll have a country run strictly by corporations than a country run by people. And everything that President Lincoln once said in the Gettysburg Address will be long gone. <laughs> but, you know, you look at what happened in Britain with the Brexit vote. There again, the story was the same. The Leave campaign was well financed. The Leave campaign published a great deal of lies about what the European community was all about. And unfortunately got the seniors in Britain to vote against their best interest. That is an issue we have in democracy today, that younger generations are not voting. The younger generation in Britain, those 30 and younger, voted to remain in the European Union by a two -third, better than two-thirds majority. Unfortunately, seniors who may fear, well, and be driven to unreasonable fears about the changes in society as the world becomes more homogeneous, voted against remaining in the European Union by an equally two-thirds vote. But where young people only voted at 35%, <laughs> only 35% of those under 30 bothered to vote. Seniors in England voted at almost 80%. And so now senior uh, Britain is leaving the European Union. Those disasters are just waiting for us if we do not see and do not ensure that our democratic vote is preserved. And in fact, we don't work hard to see that the lies, misstatements, and particularly perspective that the other side seems determined to instill in all of us is counteracted. That's why we're here. That's why we put in the effort. That's why I'm talking today. No other reason, really. To help people realize how important it is to maintain a democracy. Uh, and not be carried away with the lies uh, put out on television and elsewhere uh, by uh, those who have other interests or who are really... Uh, Let me say one other thing about our chapters. So those that are doing quite well, like the Anoka chapter that I attend, the South Metro chapter, they spend a great deal of time and effort bringing in speakers, working on projects, engaging their membership, so their membership is knowledgeable about the issues in their community. The issues not only <coughs> ones that are political, but social issues as well. Now what does it mean to be in a community where there is a higher percentage of people who are senior? What will those communities have to be like? And how can those seniors, as they get older, really be effective in guiding a society that stays democratic, that is, has the right to vote, and stays appreciative of their community. 
and all the different peoples who are there, including those who are new. Yes, and that's so important. Uh, the, the chapters bring people even from the local area that can uh, talk about uh, uh, these issues as they are uh, relevant to, to that have. area. Because every community has similar issues, but in different ways. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, recently had Senator Ron Latz of this area uh, speak to us, and uh, I think many caucuses find that it's good to invite some of the uh, elected public servants to uh, come and, and share their points of view on a number of issues. Yeah, I should point out caucuses are a different entity than your Senate districts. Senate districts exist primarily to aid the legislators in that area and to see them get elected to make sure that the DFL positions and statements are understood to make sure that the individuals who support the Democratic Farmer Labor Party have the opportunity to vote. Caucuses are there to see that those within the DFL understand the particular needs of the parts of, the, of society that the caucuses represent. Many caucuses, of course, are there because they represent an ethnic community that may be new to America or has been in America for a long time but has not had the kind of representation and services that are available to others. Our senior caucus exists because we are in such a dramatically changing time where, as I said in the previous tape, communities as well as other government agencies and the private institutions have really not come to any understanding of how we can provide a society that supports all age groups. And we, mean, we know that seniors are an age group that, well, grows in needs. And that's simply a part of life. Let me say one other thing. Probably the only change I know of in the private community that had to do with changes due to the growing uh, demographic of seniors was the ending of pensions and the creation of the 401k. And we have gone from having a defined benefit system for those individuals who have worked for years for corporations any or down to small businesses to now a defined contribution system where the individual is really up to their own their own resources to be able to have the financial circumstances to retire. On top of that, we know that our political opposition would really love to see Social Security change into just another 401k so that the individual is now left alone to really do for themselves. One thing pensions give you, by the way, is you have a whole neighborhood and community of individuals who share that pension service who, should that pension service have troubles, will be there along with you working to see that those issues are resolved. When you have just your own savings, if your savings dissipate, well, friend, it's you and you alone. But that's what we move to. And frankly, for most of those who are my age and, and, and I'm an older member of the large baby boom demographic, but those younger in the baby boom demographic who have not had the opportunity to, to save will find themselves in dire straits, particularly if Social Security should ever be privatized. We don't want that. That, that would be a, a, a put, put the... Uh, well, what a, pe a lot of people, you know, they talk about 
San Diego having all these homeless people. I've been in San Diego several times, and for a while my son and daughter-in-law lived there. And you go to a public park in San Diego, and it's a little tent community because it's all the street people who are living there. Mostly there are people who are one way or another desperate from mental illness, from drug abuse, from catastrophes in their, their lives. Should we go about the steps that were, are being proposed for Social Security? We can add a significant senior community to that group because if you're not so lucky to have a million dollars saved, well, it may quickly be all gone. Well, I'm glad to see, uh, Jim, that we've covered a lot of ground here, but uh, and we've only got three minutes left. So are there any other issues that you would like to touch upon uh, or resources? Um, I, uh, as you've talked uh, about uh, you're on your own, uh, I, I think it might be well to mention, yes, there are uh, ways to help seniors who are running out of money. Uh, Certainly, there are programs that, that exist both in the private uh, nonprofit sector and there are some assistance programs in communities and in state level. Uh, we know that uh, recently our legislator, my legislator, Senator John Hoffman, worked very hard to see that spend down limits in order to get into nursing homes or other support services were raised so that the individuals can save at least a little money in order to have a, a more enjoyable life even while unfortunately perhaps being placed in a nursing home because of their physical disabilities. Well, these are just small steps. And frankly, we now have a coming demographic that has saved on average about 200000 which will allow you to get on average about $10,000 on top of Social Security to live on per year. Uh, 401k programs, they run out of money. <laughs> and I don't know, again, what society is going to do about it when 20 years from now we have a large group of individuals who have nothing. The only other thing, by the way, is their homes. And we saw an enormous price jump in homes in the early 2000s because, frankly, for those individuals who did not have a lot of savings, speculation in homes is the only way they were going to get any cash. But you know how that ended. Uh, a real tragedy for many people who uh, found foreclosure uh, and and that is another issue which we have uh, tried to address but it's hard but certainly there are those within the senior caucus who see foreclosure particularly foreclosure in certain communities as remaining a significant issue for those who are 50 and older because frankly you lose your house at 50 you're probably never going to get a house again yeah well, Jim, uh, thank you very much for uh, well, thank spending you, this uh, additional half hour with us. Uh, you've covered a lot of ground, and I bet we can invite you back sometime to uh, uh, cover other areas that you are knowledgeable about. Thank you for well, tuning in. We could talk about uh, black holes. <laughs>